Hey there everyone, it's Haz here, and this is our third episode and final part of our Prepare for Big Run miniseries, and I hope the information shared has been useful already, but there's a few final tips that you should know before the weekend starts. Yesterday we went through luring, overluring, and optimizing your waves so that you gain the most gold necks possible. Today we'll take a look at how you can optimize your own gameplay and movement to help even more. Remember, this miniseries is three parts long and to get a full picture you should watch all three episodes of it, that way you will know when to utilize these strategies that otherwise could be damaging in the wrong situations. Last, before we start, the usual reminder that my channel is full of salmon run content from guides to tips, and if you're interested in more, then check out the rest of the channel. Now let's get started. Over the last two episodes we already talked about how luring is important to lead bosses closer to the basket that allows us to collect eggs a lot more efficiently and faster, but that is not always possible and which eggs you collect first starts to matter. Golden eggs can appear far from the basket for a lot of reasons, from players rushing the shore, static bosses like stingers or big shots appearing, or simply choosing to split bosses early to prevent overluring. In these moments, but also in general, it's important to prioritize getting those eggs closer to the basket as soon as possible. Now I say closer and not collecting for a good reason. Often in freelance what I see is that players spend way too much time picking up eggs and immediately try to secure them in the basket. I mean it makes sense wanting to secure your score, but running back and forth is a waste of time and is dangerous. When it comes to having lots of eggs on the shore, the best thing you can do is either gather up with two co-workers and everyone take one egg immediately, which is the best case scenario, or instead of grabbing only one egg, consider throwing two or if possible three of them closer into an easy to spot location, closer to the basket and get out of there. Collecting far eggs quickly should be a priority most of the time unless you're close to the end of the wave, mostly because those are the eggs that are riskiest to pick up later when more salmon at spawn, and also they are the easiest to lose to snatchers, whereas eggs closer to the basket take barely any time and there's usually always someone there to protect them from snatchers. The reason I recommend throwing eggs closer instead of collecting them with runs from the shore is that the shore is the most dangerous area on any stage and is usually the cause for most freelance shifts failing. You want to get those eggs closer as soon as possible and with as little risk possible so that later you can potentially pick up those eggs when needed. Remember, you don't have to pick up those eggs immediately, you have time until the very end of the wave. Special message here considering Big Shots. Big Shots are a new boss that spawn with cannons next to them and using those cannons you can shoot back golden eggs near the basket, not into it. In my experience I would urge everyone not to stay near the Big Shot cannons when they spawn or once you clear the Big Shots, as it is often just a trap. Shoot one or two eggs back and the moment you see that salmonids are spawning nearby or closing in on you, you should leave the cannon immediately, otherwise you will clog up the shore and all salmonids and bosses will go over there instead of slowly advancing towards the basket, where they can be easily cleared. Big shot camping usually results in an overcrowded stage, as eventually the players there cannot splat all the salmonids and they just crowd up into big groups that are much harder to splat later. Additionally, players don't camp alone, and while two or three players are shooting back eggs at the basket, often there's no one home and those eggs just get carried away by snatchers, which is a huge waste. Big shot camping is possible, but it's vital to have a good split of 3 to 1 for example, where three players are using the cannon and one player is near the basket to collect, but also call for help when the other three should just leave the cannon already. Now that we know we should focus on faraway eggs, it's also time to talk how we can improve that by moving more efficiently as there are multiple options now in Splatoon 3 that will improve your speed a lot. First, it's squid rolling. There's a lot of back and forth in Salmon Run to collect eggs and one of the most straightforward movement options you have that will quicken up your pace is squid rolling. The most simple application of it is when you gather eggs, just squid roll back into the opposite direction to pick the egg up safely and also gain huge momentum on your way back towards the basket. It's just really that simple. If you've never used squid rolling much before, it can take some time to get used to it. It's one of those things that you have to force yourself to do at the start and then it will just become muscle memory. So there's that right away, but squid rolling actually has other fantastic uses for defense. Did you know that squid rolling can also be used against big shot cannons or flyfish for example to survive since it has armor? Definitely worth practicing, but that will be another video. While fish sticks aren't the most formidable enemies to get rid of, there are numerous rotations where the weapons are just short of the desired range to paint the fish sticks properly. I see so many players struggle to climb up the towers in those cases, but there's another easy solution to quickly get up without any effort, and it's the other new movement option called Squid Surge. I find it that Squid Surge is not being used a lot because it feels uncomfortable in the first place, but it doesn't have to be. 
Once you paint the stick third of the way up that all weapons can do, you can hold down B button even before climbing up and it will automatically start your squid surge that can just kick you up all the way to the top of the fish stick to get rid of the boss or collect the eggs fast without all the hassle of painting the whole fish stick for no reason. So my tip here is to hold down B before you actually want to squid surge and it will feel so much smoother the moment you get on the stick. Our last movement option and probably the most useful one is something called substrafing. If you've been playing PvP or Splatoon for a while you might have heard about this but a lot of people still don't use it. As you're moving around in Splatoon, but especially when you're turning around in ink form, you probably have already noticed that you lose a large amount of your momentum and you're basically stuck in place for a moment, opening you up to missiles, bombs or whatever damage that can hit you. But it can also just simply slow you down, which is annoying. There is this technique called substrafing and it's very easy to perform and get used to it. All you have to do is hold down your R button as if you're trying to throw a bomb and then go into your swim form to move or turn around. You will see that while you actually have your throw animation out, your swimming becomes a lot more responsive and that slowdown is no longer present to annoy you. It's a very efficient movement option and all you have to do is hold down another button before going into ink form and that's it. Now you have one of the most powerful tricks to help you collect eggs with even more speed and efficiency. In the next section, let's talk about productivity or what I like to call the always be moving rule. One question I always get asked is how do you get better or when will the stressful feeling go away when you get to a higher rank? And the answer to these questions I realized usually boils down to the fact that the higher rank you reach in either PvP or Salmon Run, Splatoon becomes a faster and faster game. So much so that the speed can be very much overwhelming for a lot, making it stressful, less fun or headache inducing. Yes, it's very much a thing. After all, Splatoon is a fast-paced shooter. But this issue also shows us where a lot can also improve immediately and that's their productivity while playing. There's always something to do in Salmon Run, from painting the ground, painting the walls, clearing lesser salmonids, gathering eggs, looking out for snatchers, refilling your ink tank, preparing for the next wave of bosses, and so on. Clearing lesser salmonids I find is one of the most common aspects of Salmon Run that players tend to just ignore or forget about since they don't reward you with golden eggs. They're just there to annoy you and everyone just expects them to magically disappear later, resulting in an overcrowded stage. Painting walls is also something I never see, but shifts where players start wave 1 by painting the most important walls for escape always end up being more successful as you have a lot more movement options when in a pickle. Essentially, there is no time in the game when you could just stand still and you should always be on the move to do something in preparation for the next event or just to clear the map of salmonids, which can feel overwhelming at first. This does take a lot of practice, but the good news is that it isn't really a barrier that most can't pass. It's rather just something you will get used to the more you let the game expose you to it, just play more on that difficulty. If it helps, I would even recommend to just create a note and write down a priority order for yourself on what you should be doing and you will find that there is always something to do. When you start getting used to the higher and higher speed of the game, you will realize just how slow you were before and what a massive difference it makes to be always on the move in Splatoon and especially in Salmon Run. One of the most vital parts of always be moving is remembering spawns of salmonids. Salmon Run while looking chaotic is very much a mode with precise rules that determine when salmonids will spawn and how many of them will spawn and learning these rules will boost your awareness the most for keeping your shift safe and organized. Remembering these rules will let you reposition just in time to go to the other end of the stage and see what the new bosses will be, whether they can be lured or will they require your immediate attention. This chart made by Overfisher Minarai is an excellent showcase of what I'm talking about and represents the spawn intervals and rules on rank professional to executive VP. Without overwhelming anyone, the important part I'm trying to show is that on each hazard level or rank you play on, there is a fixed timer that determines when a new wave spawns and that changes the spawn direction or how many bosses will spawn. Developing an internal timer for yourself and knowing when the boss directions change or when to expect the next set of bosses spawning will not only raise your awareness to potential danger, but will allow you to have much greater control over your game since you can start predicting new waves and immediately react to priority bosses such as stingers or flyfish instead of being 5 or 10 seconds late when it could already be too late and another new wave will spawn soon. You can practice this timer in any game from freelance to private battles and try to learn the intervals and looking at the clock so that you can practice reacting to new waves the moment they spawn instead of spending too much time on a wave that's already technically done. 
these tips from Egg Collection, Advanced Movement and Always Be Moving are all the very basics of becoming more efficient in Salmon Run and to carry freelance groups, but also to start your journey to overfishing and scoring in Big Run. Fortunately, all of these can be easily practiced alone and without a group, and none of it requires bonus organization to start, so feel free to begin your training. There is so much more to talk about, but then we need to go into even greater details of enemy behavior and how certain waves work, and none of that is necessary for now to have fun with Big Run. But if you have watched all three episodes of this preparation mini-series, I would like to thank you all for your incredible support, and I hope it was enjoyable, and most importantly helpful for you to feel more confident in participating in Big Run. If you have any questions or further tips, as always, leave them in the comment section for everyone to see and help. And if this mini-series was helpful, consider subscribing to the channel for support and to see more Salmon Run content in the future, as there's a lot coming. Thank you so much everyone for your time, and good luck with Big Run. Take care, and bye bye